Greetings from the Dark Continent, Conscious Caracol here, or Adams Van Sale. And to really start things off in 2020 with some regular content, I'm going to give you some insight into the latest report that forms part of AfriForum's campaign of The World Must Know. So in 2020, AfriForum launched the campaign The World Must Know. And as part of this campaign, we also published a report on how minority rights in South Africa are being violated or diminished or slowly chipped away. And as part of a video series that I'm going to make uh, on each one of the sections of the report, I'm going to make a video to give you a better idea of uh, what its contents are. And as well as the fact that you can also follow along in terms of if you are curious about some of the information that I am uh, giving you, you can go check the report link in the description itself. The, the, the report has almost over 200 sources. So that means you can check all the information that's given here and make up your mind for yourself. And like I always say, don't just believe what I say, research what I say. And you can research along with me if you look into the description for that link to the report. South Africa is not only diverse in terms of its people and cultures, but also in terms of the challenges that the country is confronted with. In recent years, the international community showed increased interest in the situation in South Africa. This is mostly as a result of reports of large-scale corruption by members of the ruling party, but also violence on South African farms, xenophobic violence that we've seen escalate in South Africa, but also the failure of the electricity supplier ESCOM and the South African government's initiative to change the constitution to empower the state to expropriate private property without compensation. In the turmoil that currently exists in South Africa, many voices have come to the fore in either criticizing or defending the actions of the South African government and also the ruling ANC. There are also conflicting reports about the true extent of these problems in South Africa. For example, one report by an agricultural organization in South Africa claimed that the violent attacks on South African farmers was at a 19 year low and this was widely reported by the international media and was also used to criticize those who were calling for a more comprehensive reaction to these crimes. However, that report was soon proven to contain inaccurate information and its authors have subsequently concluded that they were given inaccurate information by the South African Police Service. In another report, certain percentages were provided about the racial breakdown of ownership of land in South Africa. Among other things, it was claimed that 72% of the 30.4% of the land in South Africa that was owned by individuals, thus excluding the state, companies, trusts, etc., was owned by white people. The claim was thus that white individuals owned 21,9% of land in South Africa. However, the report was widely reported into the international media as having concluded that white people in South Africa owned 72% of all farming land or even of all land in South Africa. Developments as, as such as these have only resulted in more confusion about the true state of affairs in South Africa. In reaction, the South African civil rights organization AfriForum made a license tour to the US in 2018 to inform researchers and policymakers in Washington about the developments in South Africa. The South African government then undertook its own license tour to the US, during which President Cyril Ramaphosa claimed that there were, and I quote, no such thing as farm murders and that there were no land grabs in South Africa. On the tweet itself, he was clearly misinformed. And whoever gave him that information was completely wrong. There are no killings of farmers or white farmers in South Africa. Uh, there's no land grab in South Africa. What makes it even more difficult to obtain an accurate grasp on the situation in South Africa is the political climate that currently exists in the world, in which frictions between different ideological predispositions and factions are evidently on the increase. This may be defined in many different ways, whether it be left or right, liberal versus conservative, authoritarian versus libertarian, or west versus the rest, and so forth. As a result, many opinion pieces were published in which the author was more driven by the need to strengthen a particular side of the argument rather than provide a proper presentation of the facts to help readers create an informed understanding of the situation. Supporters of the ruling party in South Africa have declared its actions as necessary steps to dismantle the legacy of apartheid in South Africa, while critics of the ruling party's policies are sometimes depicted as supporters or denialists of the apartheid system. 
While it's certainly true that apartheid was a system under which gross and indefensible human rights violations occurred, and a system which must never be returned to, simply declaring critics of the current South African government as fascists or supporters of a similar system is not only false, but also does not, is not very useful to constructive dialogue. All of this begs the question then, what are the actual facts about South Africa? These facts are provided in AfriForum's report and in this video series that I'm now going to publish, with a particular focus on the manner in which minority communities are being treated in South Africa. We use conservative numbers and provide sufficient and independent source references to enable the reader to check every fact mentioned in this report and this video series. It is AfriForum's goal to ensure that the world knows about the true extent of the crisis in South Africa, not a watered-down version of the facts, and neither an exaggeration of cherry-picked facts. The first section that I'm going to discuss is the distorted position on democracy and minority rights. Former President Zuma said in Parliament in 2012 that his understanding of democracy was that minority communities should have fewer rights than the majority. He said in a quote, Sorry, we have more rights here because we are a majority. You have fewer rights because you are a minority. Absolutely, that's how democracy works. This comment sparked a significant controversy. Some decided to give the president the benefit of the doubt by explaining that it was not really the ruling party's position and that the president simply misspoke. The fact is, however, that President Zuma's comment is very much aligned with a number of similar explanations of the concept of minority rights that were made by the prominent ANC leaders. During their negotiations for a new South Africa in the early 1990s, ANC leader Paolo Jordan acknowledged that the recognition of minority rights was indeed a prerequisite for empowerment and self-determination, but said that it would be reactionary to acknowledge minority rights in South Africa, since the recognition of minority rights was regarded by the ANC as undermining the rights of the majority. President Ramaphosa, who was the chief negotiator for the ANC during that time, made even more alarming comments on how the ANC intended to deal with minorities if the party were to come into power. In his memoirs, political veteran Mr. Mario Oriani Ambrosini wrote that Ramaphosa confided to him in a private conversation in the early 90s, and this was his quote, In his brutal honesty, Ramaphosa told me of the ANC's 25-year strategy to deal with the whites. It would be like boiling a frog alive, which is done by raising the temperature very slowly. Being cold-blooded, the frog does not notice the slow temperature increase, but if the temperature is raised suddenly, the frog will jump out of the water. He meant that the black majority would pass laws transferring wealth, land, economic power, and so forth from the white to the black population, slowly and incrementally, until the whites lost all they had gained in South Africa but without taking too much from them, that at any given time they would, th that would cause them to rebel or fight. AfriForum wrote in an open letter to Ramaphosa to explain his statement, but Ramaphosa did not respond, nor did he deny making such a statement. Zuma's sentiment on minority rights was also echoed in 2017 by the ANC spokesperson Zizi Kordwa. When members of the mostly colored community of El Dorado Park in Johannesburg protested the appointment of a black principal, Kodra responded that people who had played an integral part in the struggle should not feel as if they had been reduced to the status of a minority group. This video forms part of a larger series of videos on AfriForum's report on minority rights. If you find it interesting, you can go check out the playlist that will be on my channel that has all the other videos as soon as they come up. If you are also interested in the type of content that I make, you can subscribe. And also, this is very important that these types of videos get out there to people that are interested. So you can share this video series, this video, or even the report itself uh, with people that you think are interested or only uh, are keeping an eye on South Africa, because it's very important that this information uh, gets distributed to as many people that might find it interesting or even useful. And then as well, all the links uh, that if you want to check the facts that I named in this video, all the links are in the description so you can go check it out for yourself in your own free time. Also, if you have any comments on the content of this video, please leave a comment below the video. And as always, uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. 
And a lot of people fighting back against this nonsense. Conscious Caracol, whoever he or she is, is one of them.